Let me give you the punchline first. This is China's last decade. Three big things. First of all, Chairman Xi has created a cult of personality that is so extreme, and he has shot the messenger literally so many times that no one wants to bring him any information. I mean, this is worse than what's going on with Putin. Putin insists that he is lied to and will get rid of anyone who tells him the truth. No one even wants to approach Chairman Xi because they have no idea what's going on in his head and how whatever fact they give him is gonna play to the chorus. He has consolidated more power to himself than any leader in world history. More than Mao, more than the Chinese emperors of old, more than the Kim dynasty in North Korea, more than Donald Trump, more than anyone. And as a result, we're seeing policy collapses across the entire system. The two most dramatic, we had power outages that started last March. It's apparent that Xi didn't know they happened until September. We didn't get a policy to deal with it until November, and they're only now getting patched up. And of course, the other one is COVID. Now, we're in Texas. I'm gonna assume there's a diversity of opinions on natural immunity versus vaccines. But I think in the quiet of our own homes in the dark, we will admit to ourselves at least, that the other side may have a couple of relevant points. Right? Is that fair? In China, neither of these are options. In China, neither of these are options. Natural immunity isn't an option because the Chinese have, until now, fairly successfully kept COVID out of the population, so no one has natural immunity. And from the vaccine side, the Chinese vaccines don't work. They, they worked barely against the original wild strain out of Wuhan. And everyone in China has pretty much got that now. But then we had Alpha and Beta and now Omicron, Delta, Threat Confucius 7, or wherever we are now. And they don't work at all. So if China were to open, you're talking about two to five million deaths a month for at least six months. And in a cult of personality system where the buck literally stops with the top guy, that is a regime ending event. So lockdowns are their only option. We've got about 90 million Chinese under hard lockdown right now, about another 250 million under soft lockdown. You can't run a modern economy like that. The Germans are in recession because of energy. I would say that the Chinese would be in recession because of energy if they weren't in recession already because of COVID. So this is going to be the situation until the Chinese can catch up with a better vaccine that is domestically produced because they've spent the last two and a half years saying that the American ones make you magnetic and infertile. So they're not gonna import them. By the way, if you believe those things, that's Chinese propaganda. If you think they're gonna rewrite your DNA, that's Russian propaganda. <sighs> Next crisis, <laughs> next crisis. <laughs> Three years ago, the Chinese had an outbreak of something called African swine fever. It's basically Ebola for pigs. Doesn't communicate to humans, thank God, but you know, messy. <sighs> they say they wiped it out. If you look at a heat map of where cases are in East Asia, all of Chinese borders are raging with ASF, but there's not a single case within China. Yeah, right. In an information-controlled system that is a cult of personality that is having a medical crisis and flirting with an energy crisis, one of the few remaining pillars of legitimacy is food supply. The chances that they're going to lose pork again are pretty high. The last time they had to wipe out two-thirds of their herd. All that's left in that situation is rice. Rice is the most phosphate demanding crop humans grow. China is the world's largest supplier. They've shut their borders to exports. So just on top of everything with Ukraine, we're also losing, have lost, one of the largest things that allow us to keep eight billion people alive. 